What is going on everybody and welcome to part 7 of our chatbot with Python TensorFlow and deep learning tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is actually one, deploying a model, but two, talking about in a real high level sense at least two major kind of model frameworks that uh, I personally use for chatbots. Uh, then we'll go ahead and deploy a model and then we'll talk about some more of the intricacies of how those models work and what you can kind of do to tweak them. So. First of all, when I like first started looking into doing chatbots, it was actually kind of challenging to figure out like, okay, well, okay, let's say you want to do deep learning and you don't want to do a rule-based chatbot. Like, what do you even use <laughs> to do that, right? Uh, and there, there was a lot, there was so much information out there for doing like a rule-based chatbot, most likely because the most popular and the most successful chatbots really to date have been rule-based, at least to some degree. Um, arguably the most successful ones right now are kind of like mixtures of the two, like have rules and have uh, AI. And as we'll see here, and at least all the models I've had, I've almost always needed to append some rules to the output, if not to stop um, the AI just from repeating itself, but also just to stop responses that just never make sense or whatever. So. Um, chances are you're almost always going to need a combo of the two, but maybe in a few years we'll be able to make advanced enough chatbots that don't. Anyway, as I was looking, I stumbled into sequence to sequence stuff with TensorFlow, and um, I got kind of hooked into their translation uh, tutorials. At the time it was in English to French, and as you'll see, this is for specifically version 1.1. Actually, I don't even think this works in 1.1 because they're using a different version of sequence to sequence. Like, I don't think this actually matches the code that's in their GitHub. But regardless, uh, if you wanted to run this code, you really should be using TensorFlow 1.0. Like, you actually can't even use the latest version of TensorFlow, which is unfortunate because um, this is much slower. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> this is what I first found. If anybody's been following the stream or the chatbot on Twitter, uh, for the first while, it was actually based completely on this model. So I was like, you know, reading through this model and seeing, you know, this one was English to French translation. Um, but then I was like, well, if you can translate from English to French, surely you could translate um, uh, English to English. Now, as I'm going to talk a little bit as we get into the intricacies, uh, a chatbot is not English to English translation. It's it's actually, I would argue, a chatbot is more complex than translating English to French. Um, but we'll talk about that a little more later. But basically it boils down to there's no 100% translation. There's not even like three translations that it could be. There's not five. There's like millions of translations we could have. So any input, ch in, you know, chat input could have just infinite chat outputs that would be acceptable. So anyway, that's why that's it's much harder in my opinion. But Regardless, this was the first model I used. It actually does work. Um, I did a, I'm trying to remember back now. <laughs> I think it was a 1024 by three model. So three layers of 1024 nodes. If I recall right, that was the size of the network. Um, and, and that was pretty much all. That was the pretty much the only thing you really needed to switch around. Um, anyway, this produced a decent chatbot, but ah, it just wasn't exciting. So. <laughs> Then, as I'm following the updates coming out of TensorFlow, you've got dynamic recurrent neural networks, then we've got the attention mechanisms and the bidirectional neural networks, uh, bidirectional recurrent neural networks, that is. Um, and so that leads us here to the neural machine translation uh, that's a, much more recent and is actually still being updated by TensorFlow. Um, if you do follow the sequence to sequence, let me, I just will say, uh, it's because it's using an outdated form of sequence to sequence, specifically because it doesn't support the, um, I don't know if it's officially the dynamic RNN that's in TensorFlow, but that's basically what it is. It, the se old sequence to sequence didn't support a dynamic, a variable input basically. So brings us to this, the neural machine translation. You can go through the tutorial. There's probably a lot of good information here that you could continue to learn. Um, but basically it's, it's fairly similar to even this tutorial, at least in explaining sequence to sequence and, and what's going on. Cause you basically, you know, you've got the input string, it needs to be fed through some sort of encoder and then it gets fed through the neural network. And then that output, cause again, it's, it has to be converted to numbers somehow. Then that gets fed through a decoder, which translates into whatever you want. So anyway, um, this is more along the lines of uh, what we're going to be 
using. And like I said, if you want, you can follow through here. Um, and you can download it from here, uh, but we've actually made a few changes, which brings me to the following project I've been working on with uh, Daniel here. Um, it's basically a set of utilities sitting on top of TensorFlow's NMT uh, code, but we did need to make one change to NMT. Uh, it might not even be required anymore, but at least at the time, um, NMT requires TensorFlow 1.4.0, um, but for whatever reason in there, uh, I forget what, which one it was, but anyway, one of the utility scripts that basically checks to make sure you have the right version, um, it checked for like a really specific version, uh, which pretty much always failed. So anyway, we made that change. Um, and then we might have to make changes later on. Uh, so yeah, you can just grab this recursively and, and get that. So uh, you can come down here and see this lovely readme that we've been building. Um, but basically get the package. So get clone recursive and then we'll set all this up. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and run through that myself. So I'm just gonna pull this over here. I'm gonna use paper space. You don't have to use paper space. You can use your own, you can do this locally. You can actually do this locally on your CPU. You could in theory train it on your CPU. It will be very slow, um, but you can. So there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll put a link in the description for uh, a referral code if anybody uh, wants it. It's $10, which will be more than enough to get you through training a decent chatbot, which again, in production, like the chatbot on Twitter that responds to you within seconds um, and responds to multiple people in seconds, um, I made him with, um, or he is in production on a CPU VPS on DigitalOcean. So uh, so you can definitely run it in production on a CPU. It just takes forever to train it. So anyways, uh, ML on a box, but I want 1604. Uh, make sure, If you are following and you're gonna go to Paperspace, make sure you choose 1604. So you got Python 3, TensorFlow 1.4, all that good stuff. Um, this one's probably gonna be fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this one though. Uh, now, uh, we'll just call this NMT tutorial. I do want a public IP if I wanna transfer some data. And good, create the paper space. Okay, so I'm gonna create that and then I'm gonna pause it while I'm waiting for my password and all that and uh, for that to get spun up and then I'll re uh, Restart as we, uh, as I can log in and actually grab the GitHub and all that. All right, and we're back. That actually took much longer. Uh, something came up, but I guess to you it doesn't seem like it took any time. So, anyways, once you've got your machine up, I'm gonna go ahead and well, first of all, let me pull up that GitHub page. Uh, we'll use Firefox. Nothing. Oops, I just hit cancel. <laughs> oh, it's still gonna pop up. Cool. Okay, so we'll go to github.com slash Daniel. I'll put a link in the description, by the way, if I forget, someone remind me, uh, and I'll put one in there. Uh, Kukiela and nmt-chatbot, I believe is the name. Let's see if we got it right. We did. Okay, and if we just kind of scroll down here, uh, here are the basically the setup steps. So I'm just gonna run through these and kind of give a little bit more explanation, um, but it's pretty much just this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And we'll just open up a terminal here, change directory into uh, desktop. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. And then paste. So we're gonna clone this recursively uh, because we did make a slight modification to NMT. Um, pretty small one at the moment, uh, but it might grow in time. So you'll probably wanna clone it recursively, but feel free to take the official NMT and see how it works for you. <laughs> Uh, anyway, once you've got that, uh, I think we're going to just change directory into here. I'm the one that wrote this, this setup, but anyway, <laughs> I should know. Let me just move this over. So we'll change directory into the chatbot directory, and then, yeah, we're going to run a pip. Um, this would be a good time to mention, though, you, you really want to be on Python 3.6, especially if you're on Windows. Uh, Python 3.5 on Windows has like a weird encoding bug with at least with TensorFlow, but I'm pretty sure it's all of Python 3.5. There, there was a pep, I forget which one it was, um, but it got fixed in Python 3.6. So I highly suggest, even if it runs, it starts to run in 3.5, eventually you'll hit this weird encoding error. So even though you're opening and reading everything in UTF-8, you're still gonna hit it with 3.5 for some weird reason. Uh, anyways, uh, we're going to pip, but again, make sure, you know, 
your Python version and pip and all that is Python 3.6. So pip install dash r. I did not hold my okay. <laughs> dash r requirements dot text. So that should just basically it's TensorFlow GPU 1.4, um, Colorama, TQDM, and regex. So there's actually a regex package which is a little faster than the standard library just regex uh, and the reason why we're doing that is our tokenizer is using regex heavily and we want to go as fast as we can when we're doing that for pair data on smaller data sets and stuff it really isn't a big deal but like for 2017 for example those files for like the whole year of 2017 each of those training files is going to be like 12 13 gigabytes even more if you didn't have any rules as far as uh, like a score and all that um, so anyways, uh, yeah, make sure you get the requirements and then whenever you're done, you change directory into setup and I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Um, I'm not actually going to make any changes to setup, but I just want to bring your attention to it. So in setup, there are quite a few things that you can modify here. You can modify answers to replace that's in the output. You can modify protected phrases that you actually want to be tokenized together. So the tokenizer is going to split things up, but sometimes you don't want to split things up. Um, I'm trying to think of like some websites, for example, like something, something, something dot com. We we'd like to maybe not tokenize the period and the com. We'd like, you know, Google dot com to be tokenized to be one token. That is Google dot com, not Google as one token dot as another and com, for example. So that might be a certain regular expression that you want to protect. Um, uh, then, you yeah, the replace on the out. Uh, on the output, you can also blacklist certain outputs like words, stuff like that. Like if you want to not, if you want to make sure your your chatbot doesn't say bad words or something like that, you can blacklist them there. Um, anyway, um, that you can you can check those out. But the main thing that we're going to be looking at is settings.py. I'm just going to pull that up real quick, and let's see if I can zoom with plus. I can't. I'd like to make it just a little bigger. It's not like it's going to work. But anyways, uh, hopefully you can see that. You might have to full screen. But anyways, uh, vocab size is 15,000 here. All these settings are pretty much in place for about 4 gigabytes of VRAM. If you have more than 4 gigabytes of VRAM, the first thing you should do is get vocab to more like 100,000 with um, really 100,000. Uh, you can get bigger than that, um, but 100,000 is kind of a good starting point. Um, but 15,000, you'll still actually get a decent model at 15,000. Um, the other stuff, I really don't want to spend too much time explaining all these parameters in this video. That's what I'm going to do in the next video. Um, but if you want and if you're familiar with these things, feel free to play around. Um, but basically, the first thing you might want to change is vocab size. But we're not going to do anything there. Um, so just, I guess, just leave that the way it is. And then we're going to run prepared data. So I'm going to go ahead and just do Python. Again, it better be Python 3.6. So in my end, Python is 3.6. but Make sure you're going to regret it if you, if you don't do it. Um, and then we'll just run python prepare data.py. In this case, our training files are pretty small, so I, I guess I should have mentioned. So this comes with some sample data, just so you can quickly run this and test it or whatever. But chances are many of you guys that are following along right now, you probably have your own train.from and train.to in your own test files and all that. If you do, um, before you run prepare data, sorry, you should, you just throw them into new data, just replace whatever's here. And then once you replace those files, go ahead and run prepare data. Again, that's written in the, uh, in the readme, I just kind of skipped over that, but yeah, if you have your own data, go ahead and replace it. Um, then once you've prepared the data, again on real sized files, that, that might take a little longer <laughs> on like the 11 gigabyte files. It seems to take, um, I'm gonna pull it up real quick, probably about, an hour-ish for me uh, to, to create those files. So on a smaller file, the, it's not going to take too long. Um, anyway, uh, then what we'll do is just change directory back to where the train file is, and then we can actually just run python train.py. And then that's going to start uh, the network training. And it's going to output some information here, like learning rate, decay factor. Uh, in this case, uh, it's telling us a little bit about what our uh, network is comprised with. Again, all that stuff, like the bi-directional stuff, all that stuff I, I'm gonna cover. Um, I just really like the training is what's gonna take the most time. <laughs> so I figure you guys can start training a model and then I can tell you how to tweak it from there. Um, these outputs happen every thousand steps. 
So you'll see the source is basically the input data. The reference is the real output from your training data. And then NMT is what your chatbot responded with. As you can see, this is, you know, damn purposes, purposes, and it's just repeating itself because it really, it just, it just started. <laughs> so it hasn't learned anything, but over time you should, you will hope to see that this, uh, this improves. Uh, the other thing too is in, as this trains inside your model directory, you're going to have train log. And this is where uh, you can bring up TensorBoard. Again, I think at this point I'm gonna cut it. And then in the next video, I'm gonna start talking about all the options, the things that we can tweak, looking into TensorBoard, that kind of thing to see kind of how a model is actually going. And I can actually, I can show you a model that trained over time and we can look at it in TensorBoard and all that. So um, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Oh, and just in case some of you are impatient, I'll just explain really quickly. Um, you're gonna see these every 100 steps, basically. It's gonna tell you how quickly each step took, it, depending on how big your model is, what kind of machine you're running it on, that might vary. This is, I think that's words per second. PPL is perplexity. You'd like perplexity to drop. Um, GN, I think that's gradient noise. Uh, and then, it, ideally that's gonna probably, hopefully fall a little bit, but. Really the big thing we wanna look at is perplexity. We'd like perplexity to drop. And then the blue score, we'd like blue to, to rise. Uh, a zero blue score is horrible, okay? So anyway, if for those of you who are super impatient, that, those are the things you wanna see. You can start tweaking your network to try to make those things happen. Um, but honestly, this model, especially if you're doing bi-directional, even after the first thousand steps, you should have a model that's starting to look coherent. Um, I'm not sure on this training data, if you're using like a full training data set, like the ones that we built, yeah, it should look pretty good. I'm not sure on the sample data what it's gonna look like after a thousand steps, but there you go. Okay, so I waited, I'm impatient too. So, <laughs> so after a thousand steps, it actually still doesn't really look that good. Um, maybe it's because of the low vocab, maybe it's just by chance, but actually the first one that I trained after a thousand steps, it started looking pretty good. Maybe that was just by chance too, but anyway, <laughs> really that's all for now. I'll see you in the next tutorial.